You know, today, this uh, morning, we just want to come to the, to, to the last uh, session of the prayer foundation, uh, which we've been doing for the last three weeks. And, and uh, it's been an amazing season for me, you know, personally. How many of you have enjoyed this season in the Lord? Amen. Amen. See, listen, I want to tell you one thing. Uh, everything which, uh, everything which uh, I've shared is not everything about prayer. It's some of the things which I felt is important for my life, and, and I believe it, it, it was a blessing for you. So to see that how important prayer is in our lives. Amen? So, so many times we come to this place, and so the first week I shared about the foundation of intercession. Then second week you shared about prayer that brings forth fruit. And uh, on the third week I shared about, about the keys for seeing prayers answered. And... Uh, and I'm just sharing some of the most important things about prayer because prayer is such a worse subject because, you know, you know it's, it's, it's not about teaching some theology. It's about really being men and women of prayer. Amen. I don't think that anybody can teach on prayer unless they really are our people of prayer. Amen. So it's about making you hungry to have a lifestyle of prayer. That's the whole purpose of this. See, unless we know what is advantages or why we are praying, then we won't be praying. So all this is about making you hungry to have a lifestyle and, and how important that is. It's not to, to make you compete against somebody else or, or it's to make you hungry for, to desire what Jesus has for your life. Amen. And uh, for me, I always uh, said something before a long time back and I, I know that that people told me this and I took it very slightly. It's like prayer in a Christian life is an engine for it, like for your car. Amen. So many times, you know, people are doing their life, trying to live their Christian life and grow their Christian life by doing different things uh, without a lifestyle of prayer. And that's why they break down because if you run, try to run a car without an engine which is proper, it's going to break down. And that's where you take it for check and see that the engine is good. That's the same way prayer is for a Christian life. And there's, there's different ways to pray. And nothing is like, you know, what we are saying is not the only way. But most important thing is that you have a lifestyle. Amen. Today I want to, uh, as we close over here, I want to speak about the prayer of praise and worship. Amen. The prayer of praise and worship. You know, a lot of times... You know, we love praise and worship, but we also need to understand that it is also a prayer. You know, and uh, you know, it, it's, it's great that in these uh, times we have the hop and bowl and we have the prayer room and where there's worship. But let's look at the word to see how important for the apostles and what the word says about the power of the prayer of praise and worship. Amen. Not as a worship event or not because we come on a Sunday to do some songs of worship. But, the, but praying the prayer of praise and worship. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to book of Acts 13, 1 to 4. It says, Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manian, and who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Here, you are talking about the church. And here, ministering to the Lord is the prayer of praise and worship. Amen. Listen, when we come to minister to the Lord, which was an integral part of the lifestyle of the church in Acts, so many times are we coming to minister to the Lord? You know, because you know what? Our God loves us. He wants to hang out with us. He created us created us for the very purpose that we will worship Him. 
You know, so many times we don't understand, well, we, know we need to come to worship, but He loves it that when we worship Him. And even if you don't want to worship Him, He wants you to hang out with Him. That's how important, and that's the reason why we were created, to worship Him. Amen. So that's such an important part, and, and prayer and ministering to the Lord is so important. When we are doing something, especially, I mean, I love the prayer room in that sense because you know what? So many times we are ministering to Him. We are not bothered about who's there, who's not there. You know, there is a difference when, when we come and, and, and I want to tell you something. That is such an important part of our Christian life. Amen. And that was what the church was doing in early, and they were, they were saying, you know what? We want, to, we want to minister to the Lord. We don't have any agendas, Lord. You know, we don't have any other thing. We want, to, we want to just seek you, Lord. We want to seek your face. And that's what we, even we are trying to do, even the 21 days and nights, and we were just coming, we are seeking the Lord. Amen. And you know what happened when they were seeking the Lord? The Holy Spirit spoke. Amen. They didn't minister to the Lord because they wanted to hear the Holy Spirit speak. That, that's, that's not, that was not. They did it because they just loved God and they knew they, they just wanted to seek His face. Ministering to the Lord is as loving on Him, worshipping Him. And then the Holy Spirit spoke the Bible says. So many times when we come without any, any agendas and seek the Lord, like we saw prophetic songs coming out of that. You know, songs which cannot be birthed by our natural. You know, we get prophetic words, we can ch change your destiny, which can change the destiny of a city. That one word, when we are coming with our hearts to minister to Him. Amen. And that was what the church was doing, and that's the same pattern now. That's why we cannot have a procedure, we cannot have an agenda, and then see, oh, you know what, I'll seek the Lord, Lord will speak to me. Amen. We are not seeking the Lord. I know, we know Lord would love to speak, but even if He doesn't speak, we want to worship Him. Amen. Amen. Because you know why? He loves to hang out with you even more than you love to hang out with Him. He wants, he wants you in, in His life because you know why? He created you for that very purpose. That was why you and I were created, to be His worshippers. Amen. Hallelujah. See, a lot of times we see God moving powerfully when we have a lifestyle of ministering to Him. Amen. Hallelujah. And that is so important for the, for the, for the heavenly kingdom that He looks at people, He looks at church which are ministering to Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And a lot of times, you know, the biggest problem which we see in the church is, you know, I, I believe God wants to meet our needs. I believe God wants to answer and, uh, answer and meet, like I said, answered prayers is part of God's agenda, you know. You know, He wants our prayers to bring forth fruit. All that is that. But you know what? Too much of prayers is like, you know what? But what, like, what, what, what happens to the church is like, Jimmy, Jimmy, give me what you want. <laughs> Amen? I'm not, I'm not talking about Jimmy. <laughs> we are most of the time praying just for our needs. And our needs are important for the Lord so many times. But when we start ministering to Him, you know, a lot of times even those things just come to pass. Amen? Listen. Another thing I want to tell you, worship necessarily is not even singing good songs. Amen. It's praising God. You don't need to be a good singer to be a good worshiper. <laughs> you can be a good singer and be a good worshiper. That's great. You know, but you can be a lousy singer because God loves your voice and you can still be a worshiper. Amen. Amen. Sometimes people think that, I know, I, I mean, I'm a really bad singer, guys. But I love to worship. You know, I'm a very bad singer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but
but I love to worship. You know, I mean, I, even when I pray in this, when, when I pray in the spirit, I put on a worship, a worship a thing, and it just, just keeps running, you know, because I love it. And I pray for a long time, and I just suddenly sing something, and, and I, but what I'm trying to say is, it's not your ability to sing. Worship is not that. Amen. In fact, worship has no connection with your ability. I'm talking about a lifestyle of worship. And you can even be good singers and worshipers, but you may not be, you, you, may not, you, may not, you may be good singers and even being in worship, but you may not be good worshipers. Now, that's a danger. Because the early church, you see, if you see the word, they praised God. They loved on God. They worshipped God. They exalted Him high. You know, because there was a passion to be with Jesus. They loved it. And they knew how important that, that, and they knew that how important that was for, for a lifestyle of prayer. That was a prayer. You know, I can't get into all the scriptures, but if you see, keep studying scriptures, you will understand that, that praising God was exalting our God above every other God. It was exalting the name of Jesus. It was exalting Yahweh God. Sometimes even we start singing, and there's nothing wrong in singing some of these songs, but a lot of times our songs, when we pray, also has to be to exalt Jesus, to praise our God, to magnify His name. Hallelujah. That was what the Word was all about. That is where the power is there. Amen. Because when, see, power is not on just us praying and our worshiping. It's when we exalt the name of Jesus. When we exalt our God in our, in our singing, in our worshiping. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's all about Acts 16, 22 to 24. Then the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates tore of their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into, into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Here we see Paul and Silas were be arrested and beaten with many stripes and cast into prison. And the jailer was told to keep them securely. But let's look at what Paul and Silas did in the midst of this. You know, I just love their hearts. Verse 25 says, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to him. Amen. See, here we see Paul is beaten. He's arrested. He's put in prison. And Paul and Silas, what they're doing is they're united. And they're praising God and singing hymns. They're praising God and singing hymns. So their hymns were, you know, we don't know what the situation really is. Just think about how bad that that jail would have been, how, how tough would have been, you know. And it says at midnight, you know, it lit, it's literally at midnight, but a lot of times it's also, you know, and prophetically I want to say that, you know, we may be going through a greatest crisis, you know. It may be a midnight hour in our lives, you know. And at midnight hour in our lives, they, just, they were just not singing. They were praising God. Amen. They were praising God. Sometimes it's just, that's the most difficult thing to do. Because, you know what, not, not, just, not, not just singing hymns, but they were praising God. Think about it. It's like they're bruised. They're hurting. You know, they've been beaten. They may be having all bruises and they are put in jail in the dungeon. Because people say that if you see the jail, it's, it's really bad. It's not like even the present day jails. They're put over there. And in that place, they're united and they're praising God. That shows a passion and the love which they have for Jesus. That really showed. 
They didn't have instruments. They had nothing, but they were singing hymns. They were thanking God. They were praising God. Amen. Listen, some of us, you know, and I don't know about you, I was thinking about myself. If I was going through that, will I be praising God? You know, it was a check for me. You know, it's easy to praise God when everything is going well. Or even, you know, we're saying, but in that circumstance, you know, not just singing something, you know, not just, you know, they were thank, thanking God about His goodness. They were magnifying His beauty. That's what praising God is. Amen. And let's see then what happens. They were singing and praising when their bodies were hurting and the wounds were bleeding. Listen, that takes a pray person of faith to do that. And when all hope seems gone, they were praising and exalting Jesus with singing. And in Acts 16, 26, it says, Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the prison doors were opened and everyone's ch chains were loosened. Listen, this deliverance came in when they were praising God and worshipping Him. Amen. See, sometimes we say, oh, you know what? When that happens, we will praise and worship Him. And then we will sing and we will exalt Him. But you know what? In that midnight hour, when everything was wrong, when they were bleeding, when they were wounded, they were praising that how good our God was. And they were magnifying. And then it says, suddenly, things broke. Listen, if you want those suddenlies to happen in our lives, in those times of trial, we should have a lifestyle of praising God and exalting Jesus. Amen. It doesn't matter whether your voice is bad. Someone may not like it, but you, you do it because Jesus loves it. Amen. It doesn't matter whether the person next to you likes it. It doesn't matter what the worship leaders are saying. You are doing it not to please them, but to please Jesus. You are doing it because we want to exalt Jesus. And that is a power of prayer. Amen. Not just when we get deliverance. We do it when we exalt Jesus is when deliverance happens. Amen. If you want the sudden least to happen in life, then, you know, it's important at the midnight hour of our life to have a lifestyle of praise and worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of the foundations will get shaken when, when we do that. Some of the chains will get loosed when we do that. Amen. I don't know what the chains are there which is holding in your life and your family. Those get shaken when we go into a lifestyle of praising God. Amen. It can be when we are praying in the Spirit. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we exalt your name, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. You are the most beautiful God. What happens is there's a lifestyle of praise which is rising right out of us. Amen. And what that lifestyle of praise is doing is it's shaking things, shaking the foundation which the devil is putting against you. It's loosening things. And here we see deliverance happened. Amen. The prison doors were opened. Chains were broken. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, that is prayer, friends. That's prayer. Listen, sometimes, you know what? This is, this is I mean, there, there are different types of prayer, but this you know, this is a prayer where they, where they were ministering to the Lord. You know, they were not asking for anything. They have, we've never seen them even saying, Oh Lord, bring us out of prison. They were ministering to the Lord. Amen. They were worshipping. They were thanking God. Hallelujah. Some of us need to think, you know, we are, too much, we are looking too much into our situation. We're looking too much into our circumstance. Let's look at Jesus and just exalt Him. Let's praise Him. Let's worship Him. And you know what? Those things which are holding you back are going to get broken. They're going to be shaken. If this happened for Paul and Silas, it'll happen for us. Amen. Amen. We serve the same Jesus Christ of Nazareth who is above every other name. Amen. He wants to give us deliverance. He wants to give us breakthroughs. He wants to lose those chains. And Bible says, even the earth was shaking. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I just wonder, I want to see that happen. Oh my God, I'm just dreaming about how it would have been in that prison. 
where that place would have been shaken. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm really, you know, when they were just, when the, the prison doors opened and the chains just left and think about it. You can just dream and you think what happened. Listen, then are your small trials and tribulations which we are going through. I want to tell you, those will come down because we have the same power of praise and worship now. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, because some of the biggest problems which we face is, I don't know about you, it's a challenge for me. We complain in these times. You know, it's easy to get into a heart of complaining. And that's where we don't see the fruit. Because you know why? We are complaining. We are not, we, you know, when we go through those times, we are not exalting Jesus. We are complaining of things that have been going wrong. Listen, and that some, some people think that, you know what? Oh, I'm not in God's will. I've been doing nothing right. We start condemning ourselves and saying, oh, I'm not good enough. Listen, I want to tell you something. You can be in a perfect plan of God and still go through some of these trials. See, Paul and Silas were not on a vacation in Philippi. They were preaching the gospel. You know, signs and wonders were happening. And they were doing the will of God. And they were put in the dungeon, in the prison. Some of us, you know, think that when something goes wrong immediately, it's, it's not the will of God. Listen. Listen. Friends, it can be the will of God when things are going wrong. It doesn't mean that you won't have trials and tribulations. You know, but, but what happens is when, and then we can get into a complaining heart. We can start looking at all the things which are wrong. Or even some of the things which may have been, we, have, we may have made mistakes, but Lord still is going to deliver us from that. We don't brood over that. Because you know why? Today when our hearts change, we are in God's will. Those things have changed. You know, he's not going to keep looking at what you did one year back and two years back and three years back and keep saying, oh, you know, when, when your heart has changed, when you're seeking God, when you're exalting Jesus, when you're praising Him, when you're worshiping Him, things have completely changed and your heart has become soft. You're, you are on God's perfect will. But you need to still come out of it and get out of that complaining heart and start praising Him for where you are. And thanking Him. Amen. Listen, some of us are not getting our breakthroughs because of this. Amen. That in those trials, in those situations which we are, fa which we are facing, where we really need to come to a lifestyle of praising Him, exalting Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, it was not God who ordained those people, those ungodly men to whip Paul and Silas. I believe it is a work of the devil. See, some of the things which can be happening in your life, it can be when you're doing God's will, it can be the devil who's stirring it up. Listen, the Bible says, John 10 says that, John 10, 10 says the thief has come to steal and kill and destroy. See, when you're doing God's will, it's not like every time the devil will applaud you and say, oh, you know what, you go forward. Obviously, the devil is not going to like it. Obviously, he, may, he will bring in persecution. You know, it was John Wesley who said, you know, three days he didn't see persecution. He said, something is wrong. I'm not facing persecution. Something is wrong. He was scared. And then on the third day, someone spat at him. Then he knew, oh, now I'm in God's will. <laughs> he was scared when he was not facing persecution. That he was not on God's will. Some of us think that, you know what, some, some first persecution we face, first trial we face, immediately we are out of God's will. Listen, it's not necessary. What is most important is in those times, are we really praising God? Are we really worshipping Him? Are we really exalting Him? It's not where we are facing. It's our heart which matters. Are we really able to do that? If you're able to do that, we are in God's plan. <laughs> then we are in God's will. When people are speaking against you. When your family is speaking against you. When your people in work are speaking against you. When everybody is saying good, then you need to be careful. I've realized that. You know, it's, 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 you know, if we, it's, it's, it's not good. 
You've got to be careful. And Lord's warning, warning me about that. It's better to just get broken and just fix eyes on Jesus, live a lifestyle of praising and worshipping Him and exalting Him. And because you know why? Then we know we are in God's will. And those times of trial will come. Those times of tribulation will come, but we will overcome. Amen. We are overcomers in Jesus Christ. Because you know why? When God is for us, there can be nobody against us. And we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Amen. He who is within us is greater than one who is in the world. No works formed against us will prosper. Amen. But it's important that we don't complain, but we exalt and worship the name of Jesus in those times. Amen. Then we know that we, you know, those trials are going to pass. We are in God's will. We are in God's plan. We are going to take territories. We are going to move forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, wow. Let's look at just some of the things in the early church. Luke 24. There, how important ministering to the Lord was for the early church. Jesus had just... Risen and it says, Luke 24, 50 and 53. And he led them out as far as Bethany and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass while he blessed them that he prayed for them and carried up into heaven. He parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple Praising and blessing God. Wow. Jesus has just been taken up. And the church at that time, one is they returned with great joy. And they were praising and blessing God. And Acts 2, 46 and 47, it says, So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Amen. I just love that. You know, the Bible says they were praising God. They were worshiping. They were meeting daily from house to house. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, when you have daily meetings or whatever it is, you know, I'm not talking about whether it's daily or literally, but literally you need to meet regularly and praise God and worship God. That was the early church. And that's why they saw fruit in what they were doing, where people were added and we people were, you know, they had favor with God and with man. Amen. Because people knew that there was something special about them. They knew that they carried God's DNA. They knew that they were living in open heavens because they were seeing some of the things because they had a lifestyle of praising and blessing God. Listen, one hour of worship or two hours of worship on Sunday is not going to do that, friends. Because it's not going to do that. Because you have to have a lifestyle of praising and blessing God. That's what is going to bring forth fruit. Amen. That's what is going to bring forth results. God's calling us and that's prayer. That's not separate. Amen. Sometimes, you know, you have one hour and you ask, how do you want to do it? Sometimes people come and ask, well, listen, what I follow is not maybe someone else follows. Each one has different ways of following. I may pray more in tongues and less in worship. Or I may worship in some days and then pray tongues and then listen to the word. And listen, what matters is are we ministering to the Lord? Are we praising Him? Are we exalting Him? Whether we are singing or praying or, you know, what, is, what matters is because your DNA, each one has a separate, separate DNA. And their relationship is different. But what is most important? Are we praising and blessing God? And when we're doing that, that's prayer. That's a lifestyle. And our God is so pleased when we are doing that. He looks at us from heaven and He just rejoices. You know what? Oh, this is my son. This is my daughter. He, they are hanging out of me. I just see that. They just love it. When the heaven looks at you, Angels are there. You don't even see, you sometimes realize it, but angels are there. <laughs> you 
You know, listen, Christian life sometimes is simple. They, they say, the Bible says here, with simplicity. Sometimes church makes it too complicated. I've realized that. Oh, you know what, that church, that's just what, you know, it's important to be simple. It's important to have a heart of simplicity. You know, listen, if we don't have a lifestyle of praise and worship, we need to be careful. If we do not have a lifestyle of prayer, we need to be careful. Because that's part of being simple. And that's part of being dependent on God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Smith Wigglesworth used to get out of his bed and he used to dance around the bed every morning in worship. I want to really see that, how that would have been. Every morning he'll get up and he'll dance around the bed. And he'll worship him and he'll praise God. That was his lifestyle. And he'll have communion. Amen. But sometimes, you know, we, we, we don't need to imitate him, but what we're trying to tell, tell is about his heart. You know, and it was amazing, I think, you know, because that was worship. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. I'm going to quickly read Psalm 149 because, you know, it says so much about praise over here, which is so important. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Listen, it's always good to sing new songs to God because we, when we are exalting Him, when we are praising Him, and His praise in the assembly of saints. What? His praise. His praise. But we are praising God in the assembly of saints. We are exalting God in the assembly of saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. When we do that, there is a rejoicing which comes because of God who created us. Because of the fellowship which we have with God. Amen. And then it says, let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. <laughs> Let them praise His name with a dance. So when you dance, we are again praising Him. Listen, we are praising Him when we dance. Let them sing praises to Him with the timbrel and harp. So when we use music instruments, we are praising Him. See, what matters is are we praising Him or not? Because that's a prayer. When we use music instruments, we are praising Him. When we are dancing, we are praising Him. What matters is our heart. Hallelujah. For the Lord takes pleasure in His people. When does the Lord take pleasure? When we do that. When He looks at the heart. When we are doing it for His glory. When we are exalting Him with what we are doing. Basically, He is looking at our heart. Amen. When we are dancing, when we are playing instruments, when we are praising God, when we are worshipping, whatever we are doing, He is looking at, you know what, are we doing it to exalt the name of Jesus? Amen. And then he takes pleasure. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Wow. There's a beauty which comes. There's a radiance which comes upon us. Because you know what we're doing? We are humbling ourselves. And then it says, let the saints be joyful in glory. Wow. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. <laughs> Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Not just praises, even the high praises. Sometimes there's those high praises, you know, in our mouths. And a two-edged sword in their hand to get, to execute vengeance on the nations. That's deliverance. Listen, without us realizing when we're doing that, you know what we're doing? We are breaking strongholds in the, ta in the land. We are breaking strongholds in the territory. That's the power which praise has. That's a power which worship has. Without us realizing there are things breaking in the city. When people come to praise and worship with their hearts and there is a strong praise and there is strong worship. Without us realizing there is transformation happening around this place. Hallelujah. Because vengeance is coming against the wicked. That's why praise and worship is so important to see deliverance in the city. To see even those, those principalities and powers brought down in the city. Hallelujah. And punishments on the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the written judgment. They this honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Wow. Such a powerful psalm. Amen. There was a church called Shiloh Christian Fellowship. You know, their pastor, Violet K. 
Ketley, it, it was in, it's in Portland in California. And uh, their pastor was called for the, by the police to, because there was so much of, uh, uh, of violence in an area. And they said, you know, can you come in? And they wanted, they just loved outreach. And they said, can you come in and do praise and worship and food distribution in a particular area in that place? Because um, there was so much of gangs and there was so much of drug lords. And so uh, they, as a church, took people and they had praise and worship and, and they distributed food on the streets in that place. And within six months, the statistics say, and reports said that 70% of those drug landlords had left that place. The police confirmed that. That was the power of worship on those places, on the streets. How worship and prayer went and mixed together with, with the human things, which just transformed that place. And we are going to get into some of that this year. We really want to see praise and worship rise, rise up right out of the out of the doors of this church and go into the streets and into the community and, and along with those things because you know why? There is warfare up happening over there and there's things going to change. Amen. And that's what Psalm 149 is about, I feel. Amen. Prophetically, I'm saying. Prophetically, there's so much power in that. Hallelujah. Listen, it's not just when we go out, when we're having, when we're ha we doing this in this prayer and intercession, we are, without us realizing, things are getting broken. Without us realizing, the city is being changed and transformed. That's why, you know, people are coming and saying, oh, you know what, oh, this place is glory. You know why? Not because we want to see just the, 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 the people experience, but we really are doing it because we are ministering to the Lord. Amen. But results are happening when we are doing that. Hallelujah. Oh, wow. Why is Satan so affected when we praise God? I'm, I'm just closing. Why is Satan so affected when we praise God? One is he was in heaven. He was a worship leader. Ezekiel 28, 13. He knows, a, he knows when we use the power of praise, it is strong intercession. It is strong intercession. Listen, don't think, you know, I love this half and ball for one thing because you know what? We have praise and worship. We are ministering to the Lord. Then we come in and pray. You know, we take even less minutes to pray. It doesn't matter when we are worshiping, when we are praying. Things are breaking because there's warfare. That's intercession. That is standing in the gap. Amen. And the beauty is we are also enjoying it because, you know, the presence of God is coming. But even when you don't feel things are breaking because it's a prayer. And last it says, he hates it. Because his ruling hierarchy is bound when there is a lifestyle of praise and worship. I remember a man of God told me years back, you know, he said, you know, Rakesh, one of the keys for a church, a church should be, should have a lifestyle of praise and worship. Any church, it doesn't matter what language, which city, which nation, if it is not having a strong praise and worship, then there's something wrong. That's one of the keys. I'm not saying good music. You know, I'm talking about strong prophetic praise and worship. Worship in the spirit. Worship and exalting Jesus. He said, when you have that, because that church has like three hours of praise and worship. You know? He says, we've seen things because of that, of lifestyle, where people come and they pray and they worship. And, and some of those churches, I want to tell you, I don't know which nations they come from. It can be Brazil, it can be India, it can be, you know, those places. Sometimes they have long hours. Sometimes a problem in America is people think you can have a one hour, 15 minute service, everything together, and you can see the kingdom of devil or kingdom of, of a kingdom being destroyed. It cannot happen. We need to have, I know, we need to have prayer and intercession which is so strong, which has to be strong in the church. Amen. And if music is good, it's great. We want to have that. You know, it's amazing to have good music and good worship. And, but even if you don't have that, you can sing out loud. Amen. Listen, I want to, you know, even as we close, I want to thank 
far, how far we've come on this journey over here is because from the beginning, we knew that it was important. Even where a couple of people, where we came in to pray and worship, when there were no music instruments, where there was no worship team, still the team came in and they prayed. I want to tell you some of those things which you're seeing now is because of that. We can always go forward. We can't go back, but. Amen. And God does not think, we don't need to think, oh, you know what? It is not like IHOP. It is not like Bethel, but we are doing what we are called to do over here. They are doing what they are called to do over there. Nothing is greater, nothing is smaller because heaven rejoices in your heart when you praise God and when you worship God. He looks at us as each and every one of us as special people. As long as we are humbling ourselves, we are simple and we are loving God and exalting Jesus. Getting broken before the Lord. Amen. Wow. That's a strong glory over here. That's a strong presence. Just lift up your hands. Just ask the Lord. Just praise Him now. Let's just praise Him. Let's just praise Him. Listen, your mouth is important. The words which you speak are important. It doesn't matter how bad it is, how good it is. When you exalt Jesus, when you praise Jesus, what is happening is things are shifting in your life. Things are shifting in your family. Things are shifting in your church. Things are shifting in your city. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, we exalt you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.